It's John Bowden back for Rocky History Book. Uh, we were talking about Dolores O'Riordan a while ago and the fact that she was born on this day from the Cranberries and that we lost them and we're getting right to another big another big birth on this day. And you know what? Roger Waters of Pink Floyd is 79 years old today. You know, I say this sometimes. What do you think about when a certain person walks into the room, right? And I use the the same example every time. Chris Brown. When Chris Brown walks into the room, you think about the guy who beat up Rihanna. That's a reputation thing. Remember, I always say reputation is someone else's business. It's not the artist's business. Not Your reputation is not your business. Other people will make up their mind. When Roger Waters walks into the room, um, what do you think of? Some people will think he's a cantankerous, old, grumpy political guy. Other folks look at Roger Waters as the, the, the main force bef- behind... Dark Side of the Moon, you know, Wish You Were Here, uh, The Wall, uh, Animals. Um, and other folks were, would look at him as being the guy who broke up Pink Floyd, at least that core four members after Sid Barrett left and David Gilmore replaced him. But he's 79 years old today, born in 1943. And there he is. Born George Roger Waters, Roger Waters. He's been in, was in Pink Floyd from 64 to 85. This information coming up here, some of it's from boombeast.com. He staged the largest rock concert in history. Remember he did The Wall live in Berlin, which was attended by 450,000 people in the year 1990. That was something. Showed the staying power of the music because anyone would admit that Pink Floyd's music in and it's arguably prog to some people was was highly influential in the rock and roll era and influenced so many different bands. He's a member of Pink Floyd and was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as a member in 1996. He's also in UK's Music Hall of Fame in the year 2005. His father was a school teacher and a devout Christian, a Communist Party member, and uh, he lost his dad on February 18th, 1944. It was the Battle of Anzio, and he's referred to his dad an awful lot in songs here and there. Before getting uh, into the career of music, he really wanted to become a mechanical engineer which is something I just found out today. Now, following Sid Barrett's departure in March 1968, Waters at that point kind of became the principal songwriter and lyricist. He shared the lead vocals with, of course, David Gilmour and sometimes Richard Wright. He remained, you know, right until 85, the dominant member of the band. With all the lyrics for Dark Side of the Moon written by Waters, it spent 736 straight weeks on the Billboard 200 chart, becoming one of the most commercially successful albums of all time. Oh, yeah. He was constantly referring to the Second World War in a lot of different songs, which is sort of a tip of the hat, I think, to his father, obviously. And you can hear it. You can really see it on the the wall, of course. It's... uh, The Wall was a tough album to put together. At one point, he even brought Jeff Beccaro in to play the drums on on uh, a tune because he says Nick Mason looked at him and said, I couldn't do that. I, I can't do that. So he brought in an outside drummer, which, you know, at that point is taboo <laughs> to do that to a bandmate, right? Well, switch the freaking beat. But it's arguable. I mean, you can argue about that too. A lot of people thought that the Troubles started with The Wall. And then people, if you look a little deeper, say, oh, the Troubles started with Wish You Were Here, Um Sid Barrett actually showed up for the recording of Wish You Were Here and they didn't recognize me. He had no eyebrows, they were shaved off, and his head was shaved off and he gained an awful lot of weight. That album was sort of a tip of the hat to uh, Sid Barrett. But the trouble started way back with Amagama. Way back then. This was 1969. They were like, uh, him and David Gilmore were arguing about a, a, whatever. They were always arguing about something, it seems. Roger Watts sort of thought of the idea for The Wall uh, when he was in Canada doing a concert, you know, that part where he basically spat on someone. That happened, man. 
I'm going to get some of your comments. Uh, Luis, a great writer for Pink Floyd. Unbelievable. Pink Floyd wouldn't be who they are without Roger Waters. Let's give him credit. Um, can you separate the man from, because a lot of people don't, I don't want to talk about politics, but they don't like his politics. And seeing an interview with him, uh, someone told me yesterday, oh, you're going to do something on Roger Waters, you know, because he's a cantankerous bum. And I went, I wouldn't call him a bum. I mean, look what he created. He wasn't, didn't do it alone. You know, Nick Mason was there. Richard Wright was there. David Gilmore was there. And in the beginning, Sid Barrett. Um, Sable Miner, love recent CNN interview that he trounced interviewer Semp Waters rocks. Uh, don't follow. There was a delicate balance in their music. Very true. Well said. Roger knocked it down, but not before they created some of the greatest music in history. My favorite band. One of my favorite bands. I think I've said this story many times on a live stream before on our sister station, our big 100,000 subscriber station, Rocky Street Music. This is Rocky Street Book. That my friend Kendall Howard brought me upstairs. He says, hey man, you got to hear this song. We were all drinking alcohol. And he, and he turned down the lights. It's better if you turn down the lights. And he put, be careful with that Axe Eugene on from Almagama. And you know, just before you can hear her say, careful with that Axe Eugene. And then the screams come up. Sable Minor, it's too hard, Roger. Ted Nugent comes up. Yeah. For a green frog. As a Jewish man, I boycott his music. He hates me and what I stand for. Yeah, they're, I, I hear what you're saying. He is, um, he has divided many people, no matter what you say. In the Pink Floyd uh, 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 universe, I'd like to sit down with David Gilmore and pick his brain. I mean, he's always been my favorite member of the band. I almost put a bid in for Sid Barrett's bicycle. I remember it sold, someone could probably look it up. I think it sold for like $500, it might have been 5000 but I went, Sid Barrett's bike, man. It's the bike he used all the time. I would have had to get it shipped over here, but what a thing to have. Not Nothing to do with music, but he used it the latter part of his life. We have some other things that happen on this date in history. Eric Clapton records a guitar track with George Harrison while my guitar gently sweeps in 68. Weeps, rather. I'm tired. George Harrison launches Dark Horse record label in 74. Paul McCartney releases Tug of War in 82. In 94, a lot of things happen on this day, other than the, what we've already mentioned. Bad Religion released their eighth full studio album, Stranger Than Fiction. That's in 94. 2005, The Stones release their album, A Bigger Bang. And uh, what do we got? Oh, this is good. 87, at the Starwood Amphitheater in Nashville, Leonard Skinner reunite for a tour to mark the 10th anniversary of the plane crash that killed lead singer Ronnie Van Zant and Steve Gaines. And of course, other people were in that as well. In 89, Motley Crue, frontman Vince Neil punches Guns N' Roses guitarist Izzy Stradlin in the face during an MTV Video Music Awards. And in 97, I'll never forget this, the year I met my wife Shannon, Elton John sings a new version of Candle in the Wind and Princess Dies Funeral. The rendition... Uh, which replaces Goodbye Norma Jeans with Goodbye England's Rose, became the best-selling single of all time. There you have it. We'll read some of your comments. Sable Minor, nonsense. Sable Minor, how so? He, he seems to be a humanist. Sable Minor fights for Julian Assange in Palestine. Oh, is that... Okay. We're getting political. I don't get political on my channel. You guys are more than welcome to say whatever you want. When we uh, did the Bruce Springsteen story on our sister channel, we did that. Sure, it got tons of hits, but a lot of the comments were derogatory comments, uh, political derogatory comments. And I went, we don't, we don't allow those on our channel. Delete, 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 delete. But then some people say, I don't like them. I never liked them. More than welcome. I like Bruce Springsteen. It's not changed my mind. It's hard sometimes to separate if he doesn't go with the direction you go. I can understand that. I know, I know, I know your pain. I understand if someone believes in something and a, an artist is very political about it. And of course, uh, um, Roger Waters is, Springsteen is, Ted Nugent is. There's a lot of artists that are like that. So I wanted to commemorate Roger Waters' birthday because I am a fan of Roger Waters' music. A lot. I can't imagine a world, think about it, without Dark Side of the Moon. I mean, think about how many times have you heard that album? 
Dark Side of the Moon. I, I don't, I can't even, I couldn't even guess how many times I've heard that album. Wish You Were Here, not as much. Maybe not even half as much. I wasn't a big fan of The Wall. I know it's sacrilegious, but I always say The Wall should have been a single album. But that's just because the vocals of Roger Waters, I wasn't a big fan of that kind of stuff. I love Dave Gilmore's really smooth vocals. But it's a classic. I was wrong. So many people love the album, and that's okay. Are you guys arguing with each other? Um, no, it, it, it's I, I. I don't know if it's understanding each other. Um, I my belief system is if someone comes up and says something that's an outright lie, I'll go okay. You might want to check your your sources, or or just like flat Earth people. I'm going come on. Can we get past that? Uh, someone showed uh, a, a thing today on the internet where the flat earth, um, the flat earth, uh, what were they? They were doing something and it fell off the earth. A whole bunch of, it's a water sport. I forget what it was. Anyway, folks, thank you. Happy birthday. Happy 79th birthday to Roger Waters. Well-deserved. I'm glad we live in a world where Roger, Rogers, Roger Waters is still around. I appreciate his music. I don't listen to his politics. Not because I don't agree with him or agree with him. I just don't listen to his politics. And that's the way, it, that's what we're going to say tonight. I'm going to go and cut up an interview with Joe Bouchard of Blue Oyster Cult. He talks about a lot of, uh, talks about Don't Fear the Reaper, the Cowbell, and a lot of other stories that he hadn't shared with me before. That was the second interview I did with him a couple of months ago. We're finally getting around to putting it up today. Steve Hackett I interviewed yesterday. We're going to put that up in the next few days and uh, a lot of other things. So that's on our sister channel. If you want to support our channel, it's the two Ps. Join our Patreon. You'll get access to early visits from all the videos that we do, sometimes two months ahead because we work way far ahead. Join our Patreon. The links are in the description. I do believe I put them in there. If not, they'll be in there in five minutes. Or you can PayPal us a donation if you like. The links are in the description. Thank you for your support. We appreciate you guys. And uh, happy birthday, Roger Waters. Take care.